Well, hey there, rock stars. Sarah Rock and Robbins here, author of the best selling book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business, and creator of the CD series, The Rockstar Recruiting School, and my new one for leaders, The Master Class Edition. I'm so glad you guys are here, and um, I'm so excited to talk to you about today's topic, which is on how to get great customers. Because customers are the bread and butter of our business. In fact, the majority of my seven figure income comes from a loyal, happy customer base. So how many of you would like to know how to rock your customer base too? All right, it's an important topic, it's an awesome topic, and I am super excited to share with all of you. Now first and foremost, I just wanna say this. Customers can make your best brand ambassadors. I'm gonna say that again. Customers can make your best brand ambassadors. What do I mean by that? Well, I want an army full of loyal, happy customers who are using our products and talking about them. Why? Well, because not only are customers a really great source of referrals, but they can make our best business partners too. I hope on a monthly basis, when you reach out to your customers to say, how are you loving your products? What are you out of? And may I make a suggestion to you, suggesting new products, that the last thing that you ask them is, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but as a distributor of the products, I get them at a really great discount. I'm gonna say that again. As a distributor of the products, I get them at a really great discount. Can I share with you more about that program? We've had so many people that have joined our team who were customers first, enthusiastic about their results, and when they were shared how they could get the products at the best discount possible, possibly earning them for free or a little extra money um, as they simply share the results with others, many of them ended up joining us later in the business. But that's because somebody had the conversation. So I wanna encourage you to do that too. Thank you, Joanne, who's commenting. She said she loves this book. Well, today I'm excited because I'm actually gonna be talking to you out of my book on the chapter on getting customers. Kind of want to use it as a little guide during our conversation today as um, I share with you five top tips for getting customers that are new and relevant for today. Are you guys ready? Get a pen and paper because here we go. All right, so we're going to talk about five different ways that you can get customers right away. These are things that you can use all year round. The first one is through events. Now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about live events and virtual events because my team is having rockin' success using virtual events and I'm gonna share with you how, okay, and how often and all that good stuff. First and foremost though, let's touch on live events. My company, it's not a party plan company. However, I did a lot of events, especially when I was getting started, because I kept thinking, you know, if I can get this in front of a lot of people all in a little bit of time, you know, because I started with a full-time job, what's the easiest way to do it? It's through events. And I would kind of, you know, change up the theme every now and then. January was new year, new you. February, I was, you know, skincare company. Love the skin you're in. March is, you know, the month of luck. So I did an appreciate event showcasing how lucky I am to have my friends, family, customers in my life, etc. And we kind of went on from there. Um, you know, I did some fun fondue and facials and different things. You know, I just really got creative and thought, well, gosh, you know, I had a limited network. If I want people to continue to come and bring friends, I've got to keep this fun and inviting as well. And that is where I got my initial base of customers, and not just customers, but business partners too. It was the friends that people brought um, that continued to build my customer base too and, and build those inquiries about becoming a consultant for my business. Now, if you aren't incentivizing to bring uh, incentivizing people to bring their friends, make sure you do. It's as easy as putting on the invitation. If you bring a friend, you and the friend will be entered into a raffle to win X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. So events are a great way to showcase your product and your product story, your business and your business story as well. And yes, keep the events fun and inviting. There's a lot of um, tips for how to do that in my book, also on my site as well. You can just search the tab at sarahrobbins.com on events, okay? And it'll tell you a little bit more about doing it, but you know, music is key, creating the atmosphere. You don't have to serve people a huge meal. It's not their last meal, you know, just some nice refreshments. Um, 
we've done a little leave the aging to wine and cheese and we just put out wine and cheese. Just, you know, a great time to relax, network, etc. And use that as a way to get people there too. Tell them it's a night of networking where they can meet new friends, no purchase necessary. There's going to be great giveaways, so much more. Okay, if you've got samples that you can share and you can entice them with, you know, a free trial of the product if they attend, I think that's a great idea too. All right, speaking of events, let's talk about virtual events. I do virtual beauty bashes with my personal team every single month. And I see Noemi's on, she's on my personal team so she can share, this is true. We do this every single month and we always do it at the end of the month. Why the end of the month? I just think it's a really great way to create some nice month end momentum, close up sales, get people off the fence, into the business and help my team to finish strong. Now, if you Google um, virtual events on my site at sarahrobbins.com. I literally have videos and training on exactly how to do them, but I do them via Facebook Live, okay? Facebook Live um, within a private events page, and those have been very successful for my team. Um, we basically, you know, let people know that we are doing designer giveaways. It can be things like, you know, Kate Spade notebook and, and um, some cool travel mugs. Um, we, we do designer giveaways, no purchase necessary, and really it's a chance for them to learn about their favorite beauty brand. Okay? And so um, it's really great. I'll do those at the end of the month. We do incentives for people who join our team, et cetera, and it really is an amazing experience for people and a great opportunity for my team to invite their friends, their family, their customers, their prospective consultants to learn more. So again, check that out on my site and you'll get more tips in my book on how to leverage events to get customers. Okay, so that is point one. Let's now talk about <laughs> point number two. So we talked about live events and virtual events. The second thing, and this kind of ties in with events, um, I talk about in my book, Customer Appreciation Events. Guys, I wanna just I'm set the book down for a second because I've gotta use my hands as I talk to you. For um, these customer appreciation, appreciation events are so successful for my team. They really were one of my best memories in the business. Um, so by the way, the site, Brooke was asking, where can you get my book? It's on my site at sarahrobbins.com. You get great bulk uh, discounts for your team there. If you wanna buy individual copies, um, Amazon is the best place to do it. You're gonna get a Kindle or just um, hard copy as well. So anyway, so okay, so let's talk about these appreciation events. You know, it was interesting. I used to do all sorts of kind of like formal business presentation meetings, you know, at hotels, et cetera. And um, while those were great, what we noticed, and I'm being totally honest with you, the ratio of customers, or I'm sorry, of the ratio of guests to consultants or distributors was very interesting. I mean, it was more of us, less of our guests. Um, and why? Well, because the business is our priority, not somebody else's. Um, but we found when we put a fun spin on the event, pretty much the same presentation, but we started creating these appreciation events where we just added in some giveaways, some demos, et cetera, and we made the night all about appreciating our customers, our friends, our family members, et cetera, we saw a huge turnaround. It was more guests than there were us. In fact, the first one we did, we did an appreciation luncheon at this Italian place, and um, it was a family style Italian. I negotiated a per head price. Um, consultants could pay for their own guests, and basically we said, you know, it's an appreciation um, luncheon where we're treating our best, you know, customers, um, loyal, you know, friends, family members, supporters, etc. And we were going to do some giveaways, some raffles, some demos of the product, and we did our same presentation. Guys, we had to go into overflow space again. Some of my team is on this training right now, so shout out if you were at that event. It was one of our best in history. In fact, we didn't even know where we were gonna put all the people. It was insane. By simply just putting that in there, that it was all about appreciating those who were loyal to us, our loyal supporters, customers, etc. And we saw a huge turnaround in our business. Again, same as kind of the traditional events that we were doing, but just putting more of an appreciation spin on it and also too, doing some giveaways, some raffles, no purchase necessary and more. In fact, we do that with our virtual events too. So I just got done creating um, our May um, virtual beauty bash and basically I put on there, you know, that it was going to be 
a chance for us to appreciate all of those people who have been our best supporters in business and in life. You know, designer giveaways, no purchase necessary, and a chance to hear about everybody's, you know, favorite skincare brand or beauty brand or whatever the case may be. Again, you cater it to the needs of your company. Those appreciation events, they rock. Get with some people in your local market and host them together and watch to see how it rocks your business. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so that's Number two in the chapter on promoting products. Number three is gifting your products at every occasion. So I wanna to talk to you and share with you a quick story. I will never forget as a teacher, when I got a product, this was before um, I was in my, uh, 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 my company. And basically, you know, um, you know, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. So, you know, teachers, they are just wonderful and amazing. I was a kindergarten teacher and the parents are wonderful and amazing, but we get a lot of like mugs and I'm totally grateful for them, but we'd get a lot of mugs. By the way, I love mugs. I love mugs, so I'm not dissing it, but we'd get a lot of mugs. We'd get a lot of ornaments, things like that. I will never forget one of the most creative gifts that I really cherished, and it was a hand cream from another direct selling company, okay? And um, I just loved it. It was just super fun and pampering and something that I would never have gotten myself. To tell you the truth, it was probably around the same price as a mug, you know, filled with a Starbucks card or chocolate or whatever. But it was just so thoughtful and different than, you know, something I would have gotten for myself. And it was so brilliant. The person who um, was the distributor of this product took a little sticky label, an address label, like those little Avery mailing labels, and put her contact information and her website straight onto the bottle. So when I was out, I knew how to order more. Gifted at every occasion, but remember the fortune is in the follow-up. So, you know, if you're gonna invest in gifts anyways, you know, whether it's birthdays, holidays, etc., why not purchase it from your own store friends at your own discount? And remember that it is the gift that keeps on giving if you follow up. How did you love the product? You know, are you interested in trying it again? Um, you know, would love to share with you the opportunity behind the product, etc. Gift it at every occasion. All right, you know, if you can get it in their hot little hands, they are hooked. If you love it, they'll love it too. It's a great conversation starter. All right, so we talked about number one in promoting products, live and virtual events. Number two, customer appreciation. These are kind of those big events. Number three, gifting it at every occasion. Let's talk about number four. Number four is all about social media. Now, let's talk about what you may be doing right and what you may be doing not so right on social media. Okay, I don't wanna make anybody feel bad. But here's the thing. If you are a walking infomercial on Facebook, that's a very fast way to get unfriended. Who's watched my social media summit? Anybody? Raise your hand, virtual hand, virtual hearts. If you have not, in fact, if somebody can quickly find it, a little YouTube link, you can post it below. Google Sarah Robin Social Media Summit. There's a part one and part two. Part one is all on Facebook. Part two is all of the other social sites. And I'm telling you what, it's all about storytelling. So it's still relevant today. It's one hour. It is free training. It tells you how to do social media well and avoid common pitfalls of being the walking infomercial that everybody unfriends. You know those people, right? You might have had to hit the block button. Don't let that be you. So how do you do social media right? Because a post today does keep leads coming your way. Aw, oh, thank you. Anna said your social media summit is the first thing I send every new consultant to watch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're living in a social world. Who you know, what they recommend is more influential now than ever before. That's why I talk about it. You've got to do it right. It's about storytelling. How do you tell a story? Posting a before and after picture. Places that, you know, their products have been in the press. If you're trying to talk about the business, it's not join my team, network marketing is the best, and I'm a walking infomercial for network marketing, creepy, unfriend, right? No, it's all about telling a story. You know, if you, um, if it's, uh, you know, end of the school year and teachers are, you know, gonna be looking for additional earning opportunity, think about a teacher story that you could showcase who did really well in your business, and then a call to action at the end. Think about how you can showcase your product, your opportunity, your services, 
through showcasing a story. Again, I don't have time to get into a big social media training today. Give me hearts if you wanna hear one in the future. I'm happy to do it, but for now, check out my social media summit. It's a great way to get new customers for your business simply by showcasing stories. Be a master storyteller. Okay, so I'm looking in here too for other ideas that I might have missed. We're talking you out of my book today on how to promote products and get great customers. Number five is if you have samples, use a sample pack approach. You guys, I wanna to talk to you about this for just a minute. This is so powerful. My story is I was a shy kindergarten teacher who got into network marketing and ended up building a seven figure income, six figures a month by the age of 29. I didn't imagine doing that in a year, much less than a month, okay? So when people are like, did you ever dream this would happen? I'm like, heck no, I wish I could say I was a big dreamer like that. I had no idea, but God is so good. He gets all the glory. I have such an amazing team. Um, but you know, people say to me all the time, if you were shy, how in the heck did you end up getting good at networking, you know, in a business of networking? And I tell people, you know, um, number one, I had to learn to be a great storyteller. And I think that that's um, part of the kindergarten teacher in me, right? We're great storytellers. But, you know, one of the things that I had to do is I would start to network with people. I would learn to give compliments and ask lots of questions. And instead, a lot of you guys may have seen my Demystifying the Big Build talk. If you haven't seen it, you need to see that talk. It's my most requested keynote. Companies pay me a lot of money to do these talks for their team. If um, on sarahrobbins.com, you can sign up for that newsletter. This is not my company newsletter, my team newsletter. It's just a network marketing generic training newsletter. Sign up for it at sarahrobbins.com. I'll email you the video for free. But in it, I talk about basically how I learned to network and I share with you my horror story of my first time approach where I walk to somebody at a cosmetics counter and I pick up a bottle of skincare and my hands are shaking and my knees are knocking and for the first time in my life I see stars and I do the verbal vomit, network marketing verbal vomit all over her. I forgot the acronym TINY, their interests, not yours. I made it all about me and how could I share my business with her? And she looked at me like a deer in headlights. And I'll never forget running to the car, calling my mom crying, saying, mom, do I go back there? And my mom was like, don't go back there, get out of there. And I cried, the pedal to the metal the whole way home. How am I gonna be successful in the business of networking if I'm afraid to talk to people? Ah, anybody else? So here's the thing that I learned, my business, my products may never come up in the, oper in, in the conversation, the first conversation, and that's okay. You might be thinking, what? Well, that's not what I've been taught, and I don't know, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it seems so counterintuitive, right? I'm gonna start this conversation, never talk to them about my business? Well, what do I do? If you've got samples, okay? I'm reaching for my little business card holder on my desk. All right, you've got samples? staple them to a business card. I will start conversations with people just in the way that I shared with you, making a compliment like, oh, you know, your daughter's so cute. And then I'll ask a quick question. How old is she? And I do a lot of compliments and questions. Cute bag, where did you get it? You catch my drift, right? So the number one thing people like to talk about is themselves and it's easy to ask a lot of questions. So being shy, I ask a lot of questions and I let people talk about themselves, the thing that they love and they know the most about. Comfortable conversation for everybody. All they have to do is ask questions. Now, if my business never comes up in the conversation, it's no issue. I literally pull out a sample and I leave them with a little gift. Tell them a little bit more about what it is and who I am and say, if you promise me you'll use it, I promise you I'll follow up and stay in touch. I would love to see what you think. And if anything else, just keep the conversation going and continue our friendship. If you don't have samples, because some of you guys are like, well, I don't have samples, what do I do? So easy. Okay, we're gonna take out our smartphone. This is my pretend smartphone. It's really the little tag um, my business partner, Stephanie, got me for my desk, super cute. We're gonna pretend this is my smart smartphone, okay? I don't have any samples. And I'm gonna reach out to Heather. And you know, I'm talking to Heather. Heather's a great sales clerk. She's giving me great service. Thanks for your great service today. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking to her. We're having a great conversation. Heather, I would love to stay in touch. Are you on Facebook? Pull out my smartphone, pull up Facebook, type in Heather, let Heather add friend and say, Heather, I would love to stay in touch. You're so amazing. Would love to continue our conversation and you know, further our friendship. Here's the cool thing. 
I don't have a captive audience. Again, you're gonna go back to point number four and you're gonna start using social media. She's gonna start watching my posts and ask me about my story. But when I'm ready for it, as we cultivate the inbox conversation over time, eventually I can say, Heather, I remember you being so friendly. We're always looking for incredible people to join our fun and fast growing team. Can I tell you more about it? Are you keeping your income earning um, options open? You know, there's always an opportunity for me to swing it back around if we're connected on Facebook. So regardless, if you give them a sample or not, that's what I would recommend is that you make sure that you, this is my million dollar tip for you, pull out your phone and say, are you on Facebook? And stay connected. Because then they're a part of your captive audience. You can always continue the conversation and eventually bring it around. Hey, earlier you mentioned you were from such and such. I have a business that's expanding there. I would love to reconnect with you, get some ideas, pick your brain on it. Do you have a few minutes that we can get in touch? Okay, thank you Felicia who says that she loves the book. It's jam packed with vital information for network marketing. I'm glad Felicia is helping you and your team rock your business. All right, so we've got five tips for you straight from the book on how to promote products. Go back and listen to it on hosting events and virtual events, customer appreciation, gifting your products, social media to tell a story, and leveraging the sample pack approach or social media app approach, I guess is the best way to call it if you don't have a sample. Remember this guys, facts tell and stories sell. I share this in my book, facts tell and stories sell. You know, as people are asking you about the product, the best thing you can do is be a product of your product. You are a walking billboard, okay? So um, instead of trying to memorize all of these ingredients and this and that and the other, you guys, I outlined for you on page 47 how to put together your product story. Number one, share your history or challenge prior to using your product. So this was my story, okay? Again, you do it for your company, your product but I had bad adult cystic acne. That was my problem. In fact, my kindergartners used to say, I had polka dots all over my skin. Number two says, then share how you were introduced to your products. My mom introduced me to our skincare line. Okay, I'm keeping it generic, not saying company names or product names to be respectful out of every company that people represent. Please, you do the same, okay? All right, so number three, what product did I start on? I started on X skincare line. Immediately, as I share the time frame, I noticed the redness went down, the swelling went down. And number five, what is the best part? Today, I am polka dot free. So I'm gonna use those five points, bring it back in for you, and I'm gonna tell you how my story would sound. You know, um, I used to have really bad adult cystic acne. I remember when my kindergarten students used to say, Mrs. Robbins, you have polka dots all over your skin. So my mom introduced me to our X skincare line and I started using it right away. Initially I saw the redness went down, the swelling went down, and I'm so happy today to say that today I'm polka dot free. I'm also foundation free as well. So there's the story for you. Remember, facts tell and stories sell. Next week, guys, I want you to tune in to our Facebook fan page and over on my blog at sarahrobbins.com because not only are we gonna talk about more about customers, we're gonna talk about how to keep customers for the long term and also how to get them to join you in business. They are your best brand ambassador. Guys, did you learn a lot today? I hope you did. If so, be sure you tag your team in the comments below and share this on your team Facebook pages. I hope it helps you to rock your network marketing business. You'll find more on this topic today on the blog at sarahrobbins.com. Have a great day. God bless. Mwah! And goodbye for now. Rock on, rock stars.